Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week we're going to continue our look at iOS 8 and we're going to look more specifically at HealthKit uh, that is built into iOS 8. Now this is a new feature that Apple has built into their iOS devices that allows you to uh, track your health and it allows integration with other applications as well so that all the different applications and things you use can pull their data into one place and it gives you a, a great snapshot on your health. Now if you look uh, on HealthKit, I've got it up here in one of my folders, you can see there's health right there, so let's go ahead and launch it and take a look at it. Now as soon as you launch into HealthKit, you get this dashboard which is empty, uh, and that's because we haven't put any data on there yet. You notice you can view it by day, week, month, or year, if I just tap across there. Uh, but as I said, there's nothing there because we don't have any health data that we've put in there or anything that we want to show uh, on the dashboard. Now, it's important to understand with um, HealthKit that it is not uh, necessarily an application in itself that tracks your health. In other words, uh, there are some things that you can put into HealthKit, uh, some basic information, things maybe that you want to track yourself on a regular basis. You could put those things in. Uh, but it's also really built to integrate with other health applications. Uh, maybe if you're wearing uh, an UpBand or, or uh, Fitbit, or actually Fitbit doesn't work with it, but you know one of those uh, applications that tracks uh, different things, maybe your sleep or your calories or your steps, that kind of thing. If it's an application that they've built in the ability to work with HealthKit, then that data would be able to be put into this application. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in a minute. Uh, but why don't we start first with the medical ID on the bottom. Now, what this feature is, is this allows you to have uh, basically your medical information on your phone, and it creates this medical ID. Uh, again, it's all encrypted and all that, but what it does do is if you get into an accident or something happens and you're incapacitated, uh, emergency uh, services can go into your phone and get the information they need so they know what not to give you if you're allergic to something or anything like that. So let's go ahead and start that. Let's create a medical ID. So I just tap on that. And what happens is, is it immediately brings up this screen where you can put in some of your information. Now, at the top, you'll see that emergency access, do you want to show it when it's locked or not? And so you probably would want to leave this uh, toggled on because this is how emergency teams would be able to get to your emergency uh, medical information. If that's not turned on, then they'd have to know your password or have your thumbprint, depending on your phone, uh, to get in to view it. And most likely they're not going to get that. Uh, I guess technically they could probably use your thumbprint. Uh, if they could get access to it, but it's up to you on how you want to do that. But it's probably most effective to leave that setting on. Now, if you look below here, you see it's automatically pulled my name. It's got a picture, uh, which I can change if I want to. Uh, and you can see it's got your birth date. It's got any of your medical conditions. So if you just tap on that, you can actually type in here any conditions that you've got. Uh, so, you know, if you've got anything like diabetes or anything like that, you can type that in there so emergency personnel know what that is. Uh, let me just... Uh, Tap off that for a minute. There we go. Uh, if you scroll down, you see you can have any medical notes you want to put in there, any allergies uh, to specific medications so that you don't you aren't giving uh, those given those medications uh, so that you don't have the reactions. Uh, you also have uh, any medications that you're using. You can list on there as well so they can see what they uh, what you're taking already. And then down here, you can add your emergency contact info, uh, your blood type if you know it. Uh, you can add uh, organ donor if you want to be an organ donor. And then down here, you've got your weight and your height information that's in there. And you can see mine's already filled in uh, because I've put that information uh, somewhere else. You'll notice down below it says that this information is not included in your health data or shared with other apps. So they're just letting you know that anything you put in here stays just on the medical ID. It's not shared anywhere else, so you don't have to worry about that. So, for instance, if you want to be an organ donor, you tap on this and you can change it to yes or no. And so I'm going to put it on yes, and we'll go back to blood type. Uh, again, I don't know exactly what my blood type is, uh, so uh, that one I don't, I don't know. So I'm just going to uh, delete that so that that's not on there anymore. So if you make a mistake, that's how you do it. Uh, emergency contact, so if you tap on this, you can go find the person that you want to have as your emergency contact, and it will add it on there. Uh, let me just uh, cancel that. I don't want to put that in yet. So when all of this is done and you've got what you want in there, you tap on done, and you can go edit this later. And so now that's the information that it's showing on my uh, medical ID. And so that same information then uh, would be available uh, on my home screen. So if I just, uh, if I just tap uh, off of this for a minute and then go back to my home screen uh, on here, then what will happen is, is my medical ID information uh, will show on the, t on the front here. Uh, let's see, how do I get at that? Tap up here on emergency. 
And so down here you can see it says your medical ID. You tap on that, and then that information comes up. So that, again, medical personnel can find it uh, so they can see what, they, what you need and all that kind of stuff. Let me just tap Done here, and let's cancel this and go all the way back and go back into the application. All right, so that's the medical ID. That's how you set that up. And like I said, anytime you can come back in here and edit that. Uh, now, another thing that I want to show you is uh, down here where it says Sources. And I want you to notice down here on Sources, I've got an application on here. Uh, so I'm using Motion X, which is an application that tracks your steps, your sleep, uh, anything else you want to track, like your weight and all of that. Uh, and so any application that you have that uses HealthKit will show up on the screen. So if I just tap into this, you can see here, you can tell HealthKit which information you want to pull in from that application just by turning the switches on and off. It will pull that information in, and that's on the top. And on the bottom here, you can see that it will allow uh, the application you're using to use other information you have in here in itself. So anything that I put here inside of uh, HealthKit for you know my sex, my date of birth, height, weight, all of that, uh, Mo uh, Motion X can pull that information into its application. So basically, they talk back and forth with uh, HealthKit. And so if I was to show you that for a minute, let's just uh, come out of this for a minute. This is what uh, the 24-7 motion uh, looks like. And so it's got this little dashboard, and you can see it's, it's tracking my sleep and the number of steps I've taken today. Uh, you know, again, not too many there. Not proud of that one. Um, and then you can track your heart rate, your weight. Uh, it even does like some snore stuff, you know, when it's tracking uh, your sleep. So it kind of does all kinds of things that are track uh, when you're in a deep sleep or not. Uh, just on a side note, this is a great application I found because you don't have to have an armband or anything on. You can just put this, put your iPhone, uh, you know, under your pillow, and it basically will track all of this stuff uh, for you, uh, including it can record uh, times when it senses sound to see if you're snoring or not. Uh, so it's kind of nice. So it's kind of nice to be able to have that there and uh, and track that information. So anyways, that's what this application does. So all of this information now, if I go back to this dashboard for a minute, this information then is stuff that I can actually put into HealthKit. So let's come out of here for a minute and let's go back into HealthKit. And so now that we know what the sources are, so I can set all of those up, let's go into actually the HealthKit stuff here. Now, what I can do is I can track all of these different things. And if you'll notice, I've got you know active calories. If you're counting calories, you can come in here and actually um, track that information. Now, you can add a data point if you want to. So you can show all the data. I have no data there. Or you can add a data point where you just come in here and you put your date and time, and then you put your calorie amount that you've got there. And then you can daily track your calories. So HealthKit can do that for you. You don't need a separate calorie counting application. But it is pretty bare minimum. Uh, there isn't a lot of, uh, of information in there, as you can see. So you might want to use another app that tracks calories that then imports it into HealthKit. Uh, so that, ma that makes it just a little bit more robust, where it already has calorie stuff in there and all of that. Uh, but you can actually put that information in there. Uh, you can also share the data from any one of these if you want to. And so you can say who you want to share the data with, uh, what data sources you want to share it with. So you can actually share this information back to applications as well if you want to. So if you've been tracking it here on HealthKit and then you get a new calorie application, you can a lot of those applications, if they're connected, can pull that information into their system, and then you can track it on their screens. So it is nice that it kind of tracks back and forth. And then you've got this Show and Dashboard toggle below, and that's what's going to put it on our dashboard. Now, since we don't have any information here, I'm not going to use this as our example. But you can see all of the different things that I can put in there. So let's go all the way down. Let's see if we can find something on, uh, let's go to sleep. And all of this is in alphabetical order. So I'm kind of just going to scroll through. You can see all the different things that are there. I've got walking. I've got steps. And there's my sleep analysis. And so you can see it's got a little bar there for my sleep analysis. I'm just going to toggle this uh, show on dashboard. Okay, now this is pulled information from Motion X in. So I'm going to show it on dashboard. And then let's go back over to our dashboard for a minute. And now that screen actually shows on my dashboard. And so that's one thing that's there, and I can view it by week, so you can see the different days there. I can view it by month when it goes out. I can view it by year. So right now on my dashboard, I can track that information with one glance, and this is pulling this information in from Motion X. And so that's kind of the beauty of it, uh, that you can add these things in here. Now if we go back in here uh, to this, let's go back to all for a minute, and let's track uh, steps, because I had steps on there as well. Let's see. Yeah, see, there's some data on my steps. And so we're going to actually pull that into the dashboard as well. And so now you can see this one gets added. And it's nice. I can toggle by week. You, know, you get a little bit more information by month, by year. And so you can toggle through all of these different things, and it will give you 
uh, the charts that you have from these other applications pulled right in and have it laid out for you so you can see kind of where you're at with your with the different uh, health data that you want to track. And so like I said, all of that is in here in this uh, in this uh, data health data over here. And these are all of the different things you can track. So what's nice about this is when you go to the doctor or something like that and they ask you questions, you'll have all your information right there that you can track and put together and show to them. Uh, you also have the share option up here uh, that you have. Are you sure you want to uh, export your data? Uh, it could take a few moments, and so you can actually do a data export uh, on here, and you can see that it's going through the process of exporting that information. And you see the little clock spin in there. And so when it's done, it will actually uh, give you an export. So what I'm going to do is let that run, and I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's finished. Okay, now that the health data has been exported, you notice that it gives me this export zip right here. And so what I can do then is I can email this file over to my doctor so that my doctor can see all of the different information in there right in this uh, zip file that I've got in there. So uh, again, it's kind of a, a great way to be able to get that information in and out uh, of HealthKit. So that's all I have for this week on uh, HealthKit that's built into iOS 8. Hopefully that helps you get started with that and uh, leads to uh, some uh, healthy living for you. I'll be uh, back at you next time. Uh, we're probably going to be covering uh, the upgrade to Yosemite here pretty soon, so look for that coming uh, just in preparation for it. But that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.